What exactly does it take to get SSL? Of course, we all learn at our own speed and results will vary. But after my own research, doing a few interview calls, watching some YouTube videos, I've got three answers to share with you today about what it really takes. So whether you're watching at gold, diamond, or even GC, I guarantee the reason you're not ranking up will boil down to one of these three things. These are the exact mechanics, game sense, and consistency consistency you need to reach SSL. But first, for those of you below SSL watching, I want to show you a program that's helped over 3,000 of my viewers get to the top 1% of their game. Our video sponsor today is the Grand Champ Bootcamp, Rocket League's leading 12-week coaching bootcamp that takes incoming plats, diamonds, and champs up to GC in 90 days time. This program is designed to fast track you through the ranked ladder. And at the time I'm recording this, they have 100 118 spots left on their roster. Now to qualify for admission, you must have minimum 200 in-game hours, be at least platinum, and play on PC to take full advantage of the program. But if that's you and you want to shortcut the whole rank up process, or maybe you're just sick of me and all my tier lists, then DM their Discord account with the keyword SSL to see if you might qualify for coaching. I'll have their Discord account first link in the description below. That's keyword SSL to get details on coaching. Enjoy the video. I'm going to split this video into three sections, mechanics, game sense, and consistency. And you know what? We're just going to start with mechanics since that's what everybody has been asking for. Now, I could spend 20 minutes here making a tier list explaining every mechanic and what rank it's best at. But one, that would take up a lot of your time. And number two, I actually did that last week. So if you want that video, just go watch here. Instead, I'm going to give you the three minute summary of what I've learned from pro coaches about how mechanical you need to be to get SSL. There are two types of play styles that I think work well in the Rocket League ranked ladder, at least from what I've seen below SSL. The first play style is the rock. The rock is your sort of safe play style. It's the person who's always back, always playing defensive, always covering for their teammate and never leaving them alone. Of course, this is all on a spectrum, but from what I found, the rock play style only works up to a certain rank and is really best at the low ranks. You see, at the low ranks, whether they have the best intentions or not, players are going to be missing. And so being the person that's always there, that's always covering the worst case scenario, ends up saving you a ton in the low ranks. The problem is, if you play this rock play style and all you can really do is defend, you get to a certain rank, champ three, GC one, GC two, where most players can defend most shots. What this means is if you just play it safe and never go for anything aggressive and just take shots from a distance, good players are going to save your shot and score on you if you give them enough 1v1s. This is where our second play style comes in, something I'm going to call the playmaker. Now, the playmaker, like it sounds, is a somewhat rogue strategy. Being a playmaker is less about being the one back post, less about being the one shadow defending, and more about having such good mechanics that it just doesn't matter. There's no need to play defense because when you get the ball, you're scoring. Now, I'm not going to say the rock or the playmaker are the only two ways you can play. But from what I've seen going from GC to SSL, it's quite hard to do as just a rock or just a playmaker. You can get up to GC1 or GC2 just being a defensive wall, or you can get up to GC1 or GC2 just being the guy that can flip reset and clip. But when you come up against a player who can do both, your weakness will make you lose. That's why I recommend when climbing up the lower ranks, play more on principles. Play the safe play style that covers for your plat two, plat three, diamond two, diamond three teammate when they mess up. But as you climb through the ranks, that's when you need to become more mechanical and be able to score solo play. Because if you don't, you'll get to a place like me where I have all the best ideas in mind, but when I go into ranked, I just can't quite make it happen. But don't just take my word for it. The first time I hit GC1 and I was making a push up to GC2, GC3, I reached out to the pro coach Verge. 
we played some ones games, we played some twos games, and he did an analysis of my gameplay. And he said, Luke, your game sense is good. You're positioning well, but I'm going to be honest with you, man. You are just too slow. You need to go play once. And as much as it hurt, everything Verge told me was right. The truth is, if you want to go from GC1 to GC2, GC2 to GC3, and GC3 to SSL, you have to have a certain level of speed. Otherwise, it's just going to be impossible. So when it comes to mechanics, you need all the mechanics that I talk about in my tier list video. But what you also need is a certain level of speed. And truly, the best way to elevate your speed quickly is to just get these one-on-one -on -one situations in and queue ranked 1v1. I've never met an SSL who can't hit GC in ones, and I don't think that's a coincidence. These days, you need to be fast to get SSL. So that's my answer for mechanics, but what level of game sense do you need to get SSL? And spoiler, I'm going to tell you the exact amount of hours I found is most common in just a second. But first, I want to tell you a story about a failed coaching program. Now, I haven't talked about this before, but as many of you know, I started the Grand Champ Roadmap, which was taken over a couple months ago by another YouTuber named Delaney, and he's kind of calling the shots. And I stepped down from there. But about a year ago, I tried to launch a separate coaching program designed exclusively to take grand champ players to SSL. You might have seen this on my channel or apparently Jack's channel, because actually when I launched the program, I hit up apparently Jack and I said, I want to make a program on how to go from GC to SSL, but I'm not qualified to coach people up to SSL. Can you step in and be the head coach? And believe it or not, he actually said yes. So we gathered a group of about 10 students to demo this six month program where they basically signed up. And for six months, there were some GC ones, there were some GC twos, there were some GC threes. The goal was to get them up to SSL by the end of it. Spoiler, it didn't work. And we learned a lot about what it takes to rank up in Rocket League, but here's what I want to share with you today. The problem is to go from GC to SSL, there's only a certain amount of the game you can coach. Don't get me wrong. Coaching is very useful, especially if you're at gold or platinum or diamond or champ, where you need to learn the principles of what makes good decisions. Coaching can really accelerate you there. But at the higher ranks, what starts to become more important is something called pattern recognition. I was actually taught pattern recognition by version one's com about a year ago. Pattern recognition is just the ability to recognize situations in game and know the answer from experience. I don't know if you've ever watched RLCS gameplay or pro gameplay, but if you have, you may have wondered how are these guys making decisions so fast? The answer is pattern recognition. The truth is they're not coming up with decisions in game or actively thinking about what they're doing. They're actually just in flow. They've seen the situation before and they're piecing together all their knowledge to make a decision that's virtually automatic in real time. Point is, here's how it relates to you. And I'm going to tie this whole story back together to the failed coaching program from earlier. The problem we started to see was apparently Jack would come in. It was month one or month two into the program and players saw fairly good results. But after the first four, maybe six, eight weeks for most, all of the players in the program started to plateau. And the reason was because Jack would come in and he'd teach them the 20% of what they needed to know, but the 80% of what players needed to do was just play the game more. It got to a point where after two or three months, the players just needed time to execute and there wasn't any more coaching that could actively be done. Eventually, we ended up completing the program. We completed the six months with students and because we weren't happy with the results, I haven't talked about this before, but we ended up refunding half of each student's tuition at the end of it all. The lesson that this taught me about game sense is some things can't be taught. They need to be learned. And so when it comes to game sense, when it comes to experience, if we're going to answer the question, how much experience do you need to get SSL? Many players get different results, but the range for SSL seems to be around 2K to 4K hours minimum. What that means is some players who are incredibly cracked, you know, the 14, the 15, the 16 year old prodigies, some have gotten SSL in 1.5K hours, 1.8, 2K hours. But for the vast, vast majority of normal people like you and me, we're looking at 4K hours usually at minimum to get SSL. Now you can shorten this by namely doing one thing and that's playing 
ones. The more ones you play, the more reps you're going to get in, and the faster you can start to build up that 1v1 pattern recognition. But at the end of the day, there's no way to skip the game sense that you'll need to learn to get SSL. That's the truth about how much game sense it takes to get SSL. Okay, so now roughly we know what mechanics and what game sense it takes to get SSL. The final factor, the missing piece is consistency. Now, as many of you know, I've been hard stuck GC2 for about as long as one can be hard stuck GC2. And for a while, I thought I just needed more hours until I started playing with pros and I realized something. Sure, hours matters, but what also matters is hours past two weeks. If you don't know what I'm talking about, on Steam, you can go to anybody's profile and you can view their hours past two weeks, which is the amount they've played in the last 14 days or whatever. But if we go and look at like some random pros, for example, uh, Rapsack, this is rapid, <laughs> and we go on his profile, what matters is not only your total hours played, and see Rapid has 16,000, but also your recent activity. You see here, he has 104.5 hours past two weeks. Let's click on Squishy. You look at Squishy's profile, for example, one of arguably the best minds in the game. Not only does he have 14,000 hours in total, but to maintain his level of play, he has 80 hours past two weeks. So I want to show you guys Zanil's profile as well. Um, I just did a podcast with Zanil and we were going over his profile and Zanil has 108. 108. So he's he's in line with Garrett. Point is, I was looking at all these pros and I realized in order to be consistent in game, having a lot of total hours is good. That's what gives you your game sense and your decision making. But if you don't play the game consistently, you will not play the game consistently. Did that make sense? If you don't play Rocket League consistently, your gameplay will not be consistent. Basically, I went to my profile and I was like, okay, First off, this number is wrong, but I looked at my profile and I was like, okay, I have an SSL level of hours on record. You know, 3000 isn't that good, but I spent a lot of time coaching. I, you know, I have enough game experience, but when I actually checked my hours past two weeks over the last like year, I've been averaging like five to 10 hours past two weeks. The truth is that's just not enough. So what I did was I actually went to Twitter of all places and I made a post. I said, calling GC SSL players, how many total hours plus hours past two week minimum to get SSL? And a couple of responses were interesting. I won't show you them all, but something I wanted to highlight was even among the super mechanical viewers or some of the, let's call them the prodigy Type, right? The 15 year olds, the 16 year olds, they replied to my posts. Some of these guys that are getting, you know, what is it? He got SSL in 1.5 hours, got SSL in 2K hours. Wesley, poor guy, just got 14K hours, still never been GC. F in the chat for Wesley here. But <laughs> most of the mechanical prodigies who are hitting SSL at these, you know, 1.8K hours, 2K hours, they said they still needed at least 20 to 30 hours past two weeks. Look at this guy here, Tevez says he needs maybe around 25 hours past two weeks if he's 100% efficient with his time. Brock says he got SSL at 1.7K, very mechanical player though. You have to keep that in mind with Brock. Since this is supposed to be educational, right? The reason we're asking these questions is to actually figure out what it takes for the average person like you and me watching. I think what we can say is for the average player, it's gonna look more like 30 to 40 hours at least past two weeks. This is because in order to be consistent in your games, like I said, your speed and your reaction time needs to be warmed up. You can't be playing the game once every 10 days, ice cold and expect to win. Point is, it looks like you're gonna need about 30 to 40 hours past two weeks, which means you need to log at least two hours a day, Monday through Friday, and then five hours a day, Saturday and Sunday, just to get to that 20 hours a week minimum. Now, if we're going to say it's higher, if we're going to say it's 30 hours a week and, you know, maybe you need 60 past two, that means you need to log, shoot, four hours a day, Monday through Friday, and then five hours on Saturday, and then five hours on Sunday. Point is, you can quickly realize why consistency is so important and how much increasing hours past two weeks increases your rank. There's a certain level of consistency that you need and you got to be playing Rocket League 10, 20 hours a week. If you're not, I don't know you, but I can say with a high level of confidence, that's going to be the reason you don't get SSL. All right, that's my piece. DM our coaching sponsor. If you'd like some coaching or if you just want a free way to rank up and you made it to this point in the video, join my free Discord. 
If you don't know, we're the largest free improvement Discord. Keyword, it's free to join and you can leave whenever you want. So if you're feeling depressed about your odds of getting SSL after this video, fear not. You can join the Discord, find some teammates, maybe have a little bit more of a fun ride on your way up. Or just keep solo queuing. I'm the YouTube guy. I, what do I know? I don't know nothing. Thanks for watching.